just uh, salivating over the pots don't mind me what's happening everybody it's Darren here this video I'm going to be showing you the work that I did to my Yamadori Literati Hawthorne bonsai go look at some pots ahead of spring and also I want to show you the progress that my Portulacaria Afra or Dwarf Jade bonsai has been making inside the Mars Hydro grow tent also, only a small percentage of viewers of my videos are actually subscribed, so if you end up enjoying the video, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. But first, I think we'll get the Portulacaria Afra, do that update, and then we can move on to the Hawthorne. Here she is then, gotta be honest, we've had a few things go a little bit wibbly wobbly, but generally it's grown pretty well, it's produced lots of shoots and where we've cut back we've got some good back buds forming, we've had some new shoots develop where we chopped it, so it was doing pretty well actually, and I've been really pleased with its progress. Um, then the mishap kicked in, I had a couple of mishaps actually. Um, I noticed that when I was watering, water was pooling underneath the pot, so I raised it up off the ground. And I think I raised it too high and it was too close to the light, which was too intense for too long. And what we started to see is these shoots, they started to sort of, they've not flopped down. It's almost as if they've decided to try and grow away from the light, um, so it's too intense. To remedy that, I've, I've used a couple of bits of wood to raise it off the ground but not so high that it's too close to the light. I also adjusted the light touch so it's not quite so intense. That's the really good thing about the Mars Hydro, it's got that adjustment so you can tweak it. What else did, what else, I think I've been over watering as well. It's been kind of tricky to get to know how much water it wants in this environment which is quite warm and dry um, so I think I was kind of overcompensating. So we have had quite a lot of leaves drop and I did say that that was going to be my my metric if you like for assessing how successful we've been with the grow tent and the grow light um, but it's not the grow lights fault at the moment it's user error still plenty of time for me to pull it back really dial in that watering oh <laughs> the other mishap I had I was moving stuff around and I dropped the the timer plug I didn't realise until a few days ago, but it had got stuck on. <laughs> so, so it had a bit too much light, which again, I think is probably why it's um, choosing to grow away from the light. Again, these aren't drooping because it's wilting. It's, you know, it's rigid. It's just going, oh gosh, <laughs> it's like a vampire. Ah, too much light. Anyway, so the Mars Hydro TS-1000. So far, I've got no complaints complain about myself all day but no complaints about the TS-1000, the Mars Hydro, the Grow 10 have all done a sterling job and um, I'm excited to see what happens in the future once I've got the watering and whatnot dialed in and I replace the timer plug. Anyway so yeah I'm happy with the tree and I'm happy with the grow lights all going well. A bit annoyed at myself but what can you do it's a learning exercise at the end of the day. We're all learning. Learning's okay. Mistakes happen. That's how we learn. We learn from mistakes. But yeah, the grow light's brilliant. Ever so easy to adjust. Setup was dead easy. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, I would, if I had, I didn't, if I didn't have one already, I would definitely buy one. And I think I'm gonna start a dwarf jade farm. <laughs> right, I'm gonna pop this one back into the grow tent, zip it all up, nice and warm and snug. And then let's have a look at what work was done a few days ago on the old Literati Hawthorne. Oh, and I would also love your opinions on some pots for the Hawthorne, because I will, I will definitely this year be repotting it in the spring, so look forward to your feedback on that. The first thing I'm going to do is really quickly whiz around the tree and cut back some of these really long spiny branches so I don't end up losing eyes. That would be the ideal. If I could keep all of my eyeballs intact, that would be fantastic. In the previous work on this tree, I 
selected the best front and viewing angle and I wired out the branches that we had, give them a little bit of movement and I put them into positions that felt like they could contribute to the design in the future and then just let them grow. So feel free to go back and check out the previous video if you'd like to see that work and some of the dis why I made the decisions that I've made to get to this position that we're in today. But for now let's go ahead and start making some of the structural decisions. And the main thing that catches my eye is we've got we've got a bit of inverse taper developing here and this it's caused by this branch being on the inside of a bend. So removing this is going to leave a space here and I think I can always reposition this branch to help with that. So that's always an option. Right, I've warmed up, the hoodie's off. Come on, let's get on with it. All right, here we go. Lovely. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of the shoulder left intact there. So I'm going to very carefully, I'm just going to very carefully come in, just whittle a bit more off. So we can get nice and snug to the shoulder. Just a bit of cut paste just to keep that nice and snug. Removing this branch is a really easy decision. I don't like it at all. Um, and I'm going to take this one off right now because it's you know clouding my judgment of what to do in this area. So let's just cut this one off. So on the end of this small branch, we've got this big old knuckle. It's something that Hawthorne are quite prone to. As they send out multiple shoots from the same spot, we can get the formation of these knuckles. So I'm just gonna cut it out. I've eaten quite a long way into the shoulder of this branch. Normally I wouldn't do that, but because of the big knuckle, I've decided to really, really go into that piece. Cut out the inverse taper. So I'm just looking at this area now. I think in terms of the bar branch here, I think we can get away with it for the time being. So the next thing on my mind is the branch that comes down here. I really just think it's, it's kind of weird the way it's doing that. It's coming from the back of the trunk and coming back round. It's at a funny angle. Um, the movement's a bit awkward. So I'm going to cut that branch back, clean up the lines in this area and then we'll turn our attention to this branch down here. Okay, so we've got a couple of pieces that we can transition to. I think I'll cut back to this piece, or maybe we'll eventually cut back to this bit. We'll see how it goes, see how the tree responds. But for now, like I said, let's just come in and set up that transition. All right, let's just see what that's done then. Hmm. It's still visible, isn't it? You can still see this thing hooking and interfering visually with this bit. Do you know, I might cut back to this section here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down there, transition to this bit, maybe wire this somewhere, and see how that looks. I need to come in with the saw. I'm gonna to need to be quite careful with this one. It, there's quite a lot going on in this area, so I'll have to be careful. Take it slow. Don't want to mar the trunk or accidentally chop off that branch that's going to be kept. <laughs> uh. Nearly there. There we go. Just going to very carefully clean up the uh, cut edge of the cambium. I'm not looking to... I don't want to whittle away a great big load of material. Just clean up that very top edge of cambium. And then once again, a little bit of cut paste. You know the score by now. There we go. Look at that. That's much better, much cleaner, much more tidy. Flows better, doesn't have a big weird branch coming all at weird angles. Happy with that. Yes, loving that. That looks way better. The next thing I want to turn my attention to is this branch here. It's heading off backwards, but I really just don't like this visual loop that we've got from the front. Yeah, that's not really doing it for me. I'm going to cut back to some buds we've got just here. Right, 
let's have a look at that. <coughs> Nope. Now we've still got a, a, that loop still causing us aggro, so I'm going to cut back further still. Let's cut back to the. Let's cut back to here. A little bit fiddly. Let's take that thorn out of the way. On two. It's just obstructing my access just a little bit. Okay, right. Let's try. Come in just like so, and lovely. All right, how's that looking? Okay, I'm still not completely convinced that we need this branch, uh, but I won't remove it just yet. I'll make that decision once I know what's going on with some of these pieces a bit more. Okay, this branch is what I'm looking at next. It's outside of the silhouette at this length, so I just need to decide where to cut back to. Uh, I think if I cut back to these buds here, that's about the right length, and it also gives us some nice upward buds to uh, use. So with this branch, I'm not sure if I want to keep it going in this direction or come back. No, I don't want it coming back this way. Do I? I'll tell you what, I'll cut back to one of the first nodes. Well, this I know is too, sh is too long. It's pretty straight, so I'll cut back to the first node on that piece as well. These two pieces, this piece and this piece, visually are just crowding this area out. Mm, I mean this is pretty pretty thick and coarse for where it is on the tree. It does have some movement but um, I think overall yeah let's uh, let's take that off now. Um, it's quite yeah I'm gonna come in with the saw with this piece. I'm just gonna do my best to stay outside of that collar again. Are we looking? Good. Okay, let's do it. Let the saw do the work. There we go. I've been thinking about repositioning this piece with some wire, just somewhere around here and cutting it back shorter so that it doesn't visually interfere with this piece here. But actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to cut it back. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to cut it back. Let's see, where should we cut it back to? Just there's going to do it. Just a tiny dollop of callus mate. I've removed much more than I thought would be necessary, but when you really look at it and you, you make the first cut and you notice other issues as a consequence, you just got to, especially when you're building deciduous, you just got to go with it, make those choices, take the hit, and hopefully you'll end up with a better tree in the future. Um, so all that really is on my mind now is a bit of wiring to a couple of pieces here, and I want to reposition this branch up just a bit higher and also cut it back because it's longer than I think we want. the pruning and the wiring done. 
Obviously I've cut quite a lot more off than I intended to at the start. I think we've reduced it down to the primary lines we want to keep. I'm still not completely convinced with what we're doing with these two pieces here. Uh, depending on where you're standing, they do kind of get in each other's way. But I'm going to keep them both and we'll see how that develops. Sometimes, especially with deciduous trees, I think it's just the way you go. When you have one big decision to make, what we did with this branch, all of a sudden the knock-on effects, you see different angles, it opens up space, you get a clearer you get a much more clearer idea of what's going on, and sometimes you just end up taking it back to the, the bare bones. Alright, let's look at some pots then. Oh my god! Right, I've got several pots for this tree. Oh, pots. Ooh. Got a couple of nice pots here. By the way, before I show you these pots and get your opinion on these pots, just wanted to say I'm sorry I haven't been making any videos for the last couple of months. It's been a while, it's been longer than I thought actually. I had a bit of a run of bad luck. I had a, an unexpected bill from HMRC, a tax bill. It's not because I'm filthy rich, it's because I forgot to pay a 28 quid charge a couple of years ago and I've been accruing fines for not paying it in time. That hurt badly. <laughs> Then the truck was in for MOT, a couple of ball joints, but it was a bit of a mission to get them replaced. So that cost my other arms and legs. Oh, we've had a string of plumbing issues in the house. Oh my God, so that cost a small fortune. You know, I'm not all about money, but you know, it's been a bit of a rubbish year really, hasn't it? And then to have all these bills come at once, um, it just got too much. You know, I suffer from depression and anxiety since I was a kid anyway, but to have all this pile on top, I just couldn't bear. I couldn't bear to do anything. Um, but this is why, this is why we, this is why we do bonsai, right? Because um, when you're working on a tree, you just, your problems disappear. You're just there in the moment. It's just you and the tree thinking it through. It was a dark time, uh, but, but I'm here now and I'm, you know, I'm back. I'm cooking on gas. Right, that's enough. I'm rambling. Let's do it. Pots. So, <clears throat> shape-wise, I'm pretty sold on going for the round, uh, you know, with the literati, which can have a nice small crown, and it being pushed right off to the side with that heavy asymmetry, I think a round drum or, or a round pot that's fairly small and allows this centre of mass to be outside of the perimeter of the pot, it's just really going to give that beautiful aesthetic that we know and love from a literati. Yes. Right, let's have a look at the pots then. So I've got I've got this drum which was made by Ian Bailey of Scotland. Oh, I love this pot. Look at it. Beautiful. It's just such a beautiful pot this. I absolutely adore it. I had to buy it as soon as I saw it from Alex Rudd of European Bonsai Potters Collective. Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> just uh, salivating over the pots, don't mind me. It's got some some gold hues with uh, a touch of blue-green peeping through the days. I think one of the things I like best about this pot is just the beautiful studs. Sometimes you see studs on a drum that look a bit slapdash, you know. You can see where they've been attached and worked and whatnot, but the studs on this are absolutely... Perfect. And then the other pot that I only picked up about, I don't know, a week or so ago is this pot by Holden Ceramics, Gavin Holden. He's been making bonsai pottery for a while, mostly for himself and friends. And he set himself up a nice web store and he's got some beautiful pots on there. And when I saw this one, I just adore this colour. Just such a stunning colour. Very loud. My only question about this one is will it be a bit too loud for the tree? Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that, but I'd love to know what you think. So yeah, these are my preferred two, but because of the suspected uh, awkward root that we've got under the soil there, I've also got a couple of larger pots that they're nothing to look at, they're just a bit bigger just in case we need that extra size. So the first one's just this uh, fairly simple beefy looking Erin. Yeah, for externally it's not much bigger than the other two pots, but it's just got just a little bit more depth and just a little bit more room internally in case we need it. And finally, if this one still isn't big enough, 
we've got this one from Springwood's Nick Payne. So this one's on the big side. It's not as, it's not as deep as the Aryan, but it's wider in case we need some extra width. I don't really think the glaze or the texture. Oh, I suppose the texture's okay. You know, it kind of echoes the trunk a bit. But the colour of the glaze, I don't know. I'm not really fussed on the colour of this one. So shoot me a comment, let, let me know which one you prefer. We'll go one for the turquoise Holden, two for the Ian Bailey, three for the Aryan, or four for the Springwood. Let me know, I'd love to know your thoughts, because springs are coming.